Welcome to a new video in my SAP GUI scripting series. In this video, we will look at an example of running a table select in SC16, exporting the content of the report to a CSV and importing that to Excel. Of course, this concept can be used for a query or any other SAP standard report. If you are new to GUI scripting, I recommend you watching my first video in this series, which explains the basics of GUI scripting and addresses some common issues. The Excel file I'm showing in this video is available for download and you can find the link in the video description. This example is done in SAP CRM, but the concept can be used in any GUI system. So let's get started. The Excel file itself is really simple. It has a control sheet which um, basically just explains how to use this report and a button which starts, starts the extract, extract process. And there is another second worksheet called extract where the data is going to be imported. So um, you, first you need to log into SAP. So you, you need to have an active session in the client that you want to connect to. And you just click on extract to start the script. And as you can see in the background, uh, the system has executed SC16. Um, it entered the table name and it loaded the first variant for that table. And um, then um, it typed a percent PC to the command line, which starts the uh, um, extract to a local file. I selected uh, unconverted, uh, specified the folder and the file name, and then I clicked extract. And as a next step, which wasn't really visible because that was quite fast, is that same uh, CSV file was loaded as a text file and converted um, into Excel. And that's what you can see in the extract uh, worksheet. So as you can see, this report was had about 400 and something lines and all of them got imported into Excel with all the columns that was exported from, uh, uh, from SAP. Now let's see how the script was created. Uh, so first of all, I go into, the, into my GUI and I select script recording and playback. And I click on more so that I can specify the file that I want to um, create. So I'm just going to name this as test.vbs. If you cannot access this screen or your recording button is uh, disabled, then most probably either the complete scripting or script recording is disabled. Again, go to my first video where you can find details on how to check that and how to enable it. So I'm going to click on record to start the script recording. So the first step is that we start a transaction slash NSE16 and um, we provide the table name. Uh, it's important that you enter a table and not just hit enter. Uh, and then we are going to load the first variant. So I open up the variant screen. So conveniently, I only have one variant for this report. Uh, I load this variant. Um, as you can see, the variant within that variant, I saved that the maximum number of hits is not the standard 200 or 2000, but 20,000, just to make sure that I can export all the entries that are returned by the uh, by the report. Um, if you have a large table, you might want to ins um, increase the width of your output. But um, if everything is fine, I just do execute. I see my number of entries. I do um, percent %pc, uh, but you can ac um, access the same functionality from the menu as well. And I select unconverted, and I specify the, uh, so my folder and then my text file. Important thing is that you click on replace in case you are running this uh, script multiple times, uh, just to make sure that you can up override the previous uh, extract. So click replace and then that's it. The information is extracted. Now we can stop the recording. Let's look at the script that SCP has generated. So this is the Visual Basic script, uh, and it's stored in a file that I specified uh, before I started the recording. You can ignore the first couple of lines in the code because that's all about connecting to the SAP session, which we are going to handle separately. So what you need to focus at is the lines that start with session dot something. So um, uh, by reading the code, you can pretty much uh, see or you can tell what's happening. So first of all, we maximize the uh, the client and then we enter a C16 and this piece of line 
is the enter key and then we enter the table name and then we press enter again and then we press the button on the toolbar which opens up the variant and then we select row zero so again as you can see the script assumes that the the variant that you want to load is always the first variant so if you are saving variants just make sure that you save it with um I don't know with you know with a or with an exclamation mark start in the beginning so it gets um, um, displayed on the top of the list because I think by default it's sorted off also um, alphabetically so we are selecting the first one and then we are double clicking to load it and then we click execute and uh, then we enter percentage PC and then do all the other stuff as you can see the folder name and the file name is specified here and then this last um, action is the one where you click replace on the on the pop-up window and um, after this your file will be created in your local drive before we start using the script which got created let's have a look at the uh, the macro in this excel file so i'm pressing alt f11 to bring up uh, the visual basic editor and in that I'm opening module one and the modules, which contains um, the code uh, for this um, uh, macro. So in the beginning, you see a few public declarations uh, and a couple of uh, uh, constants. Um, so out of it, the last two is important for this particular exercise is the F path and the F file name, uh, which contains in which folder and under which file name that the CSV should be, should be created. Um, the rest of the declaration is, is, are required to um, for the GUI scripting in general. So uh, just to open a new s connection uh, attached to an existing SAP session and some of the other bits and pieces. Um, if you are interested in those, again, watch my first video in this series because that goes through every single code in this uh, script. So at the moment, I'm just going to focus on the one which is specific for this um, uh, exercise and before i start going through the the code i just go all the way to the end so when i click on this extract um, data button so if you look at the the macro which is assigned to it you can see that it's calling the start extract method or subroutine and in here um, first i'm setting the the client that i want to connect to so it should be the cg210 and I call this run GUI script, which is actually the GUI scripting. And then I end the, um, the GUI session and I click uh, switch to the extract uh, worksheet where, where the data is stored. I delete all the content of this worksheet. I load the CSV file. And at the end, I'm just updating a, the, a cell in the control sheet, which I haven't talked about before. So. Um, again, for reporting or admin purposes, every time the, I run the extract, I update this field with the current date and time, so I know how old my data is. Um, so the well, the first line is only a declaration. So let's look at the run GUI script code. Um, okay, so this is run, run GUI script. In in the beginning, I'm attaching to the GUI session. So again, if you haven't seen the previous video, this example, uh, so this GUI scripting example attaches to an existing GUI session instead of logging on to the SAP directly. So you need to log in um, before before you run this Excel file. So um, and for that reason, uh, this macro is not storing any user IDs or password because it just attaches to an existing GUI session. And then the rest of the, the code in here is pretty much what you have seen in the, uh, in the script recording. So if I place this, place this side by side, you can see that these are, I just copy and pasted the lines from here over to this section in the, uh, in the, in the Excel macro. The only difference is that in, um, in my code, I'm ca calling the session variable as object session OBE sesh SESS um, and the um, SAP just calls it session. So when I paste this piece of code in, just replace all the session to, to this word in the beginning. But pretty much you can see that it's the same lines, uh, same code. So maximize to SA16, read the table, um, select the first variant, um, uh, enter percentage PC and 
the difference here is again if you remember there are, there are these two lines in the code here which is um, uh, ctxtdi path and ctxtdi file name and uh, in the in the recorded script obviously it is the value that you have entered on the you know during your script recording and in here in the Excel we are replacing that with the, the path and the file name I mean um, but I mean quite frankly uh, you can decide to leave the uh, leave them as a constant um, um, and not to use these global variables again it wouldn't have any any impact but I was using uh, when I first developed this method, I actually uh, ran multiple extracts, you know, multiple SC16 tables and queries and reports. So I wanted a, a way to um, always specify specifically what is the path and the finding I want to use. So anyway, it's up to you. And uh, and the rest of the code is just simple. There is a message if, if an error, error occurs, uh, but uh, that's pretty much it. So that's the Rangui script uh, method. If you go back to the main code, then, then we end the session, then we uh, uh, switch to the extract uh, worksheet, and then we call this delete all uh, method. And the, what this delete all does is, is actually a piece of code that I recorded uh, in macro. So I just started a macro recording, I selected the entire sheet, and I click, I press delete, and that obviously deletes the entire content of that worksheet and that generates this, this piece of code. So we are executing that to de delete any previous data. And after that, we call this open CSV file, uh, which loads the data into Microsoft Excel. This code looks a little bit complicated, but actually it is really easy to generate. Um, so the way to do it is you try to do the same exercise and then record it in a macro, obviously. So um, that's my extract worksheet. I'm deleting everything, deleting the entire content. And I go into the developer tab and I click on record macro. And, and then you start a macro recording. And to import a text file, other than using the file save, you go to the data uh, ribbon and um, you select this from text button and um, and you import your file so um, I think I'm using I'm using CRM so uh, the first question is uh, whether it's a fixed bit or delimited I'm using the delimited uh, and I will use the pipe as a separate uh, separating uh, character and I start importing from row 4 because that's the first one with the column headers so I go to next and I say that uh, the delimiter is pipe and good and I go next and then I will just say for that I don't want to import the first couple of columns so I don't need that and I don't need that and I don't need a client and the everything else can stay pretty much um, as like general um, because I don't really have any special fields but if you have anything which is like a number field, um, you should use this advanced uh, filter where you can uh, specify your uh, decimal separator and the thousand separator because um, um, the SAP CSV extract might use a different separators than what your um, Excel um, uses. So if you so sometimes it may happen that you just import something and then that gets imported as a text and you won't be able to use that to calculate sums or any you know other um, numerical functions. So just make sure that you try to convert it properly or try to import it properly using this function here in under advanced. So um, there are no numerical fields in here. Uh, so I can just click finish and. Uh, I want to import it into uh, this um, position, like cell A1, and I click on OK. Obviously, that all happens. I go back to Developer uh, tab, and I click on Stop Recording. And if I go back to my Visual Basic Editor, and I go to Module 2, then actually you can see that it's Macro 1, and uh, 
you can see that it's pretty much the same code. Well, it's the, it is the same code which is generated here. So in my code, what I have done is, um, sorry, just to go back to what uh, the system has generated. So you can see that the first line starts with active sheet, query table, add, da, 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 and text, and then you see the file path. So I have replaced that with the F path and the F file name um, variables that are defined globally. So just to make sure that I'm exporting what, whatever I'm exporting is the same file that I'm importing. Again, that's only relevant if you are using you know, multiple scripts or you are exporting multiple files. So you can leave it, uh, leave it with the hard-coded values as well. And pretty much the rest is, uh, is what um, uh, Excel has generated. I mean, this looks slightly different because I might have done something slightly differently, but it's pretty much the same code. So what I usually do is I select like all these, I just leave out this comment and, and name, and then I copy and I paste it in here. So you can read most of the code. It does make sense. Um, like for example, this uh, data type is the one where you specify that I don't want to imp import the first nine columns and all the other columns should be imported as general. Uh, but you know, once you have done the recording, you don't really need to understand what the code does. So once you have copy and pasted that over, you can remove module two, it's no longer required. And you have the, the code which imports your CSV file. And actually that's pretty much it. Because if you go back to the main um, method, um, once you loaded the CSV file, then that's pretty much the end of the, call, call, uh, end, end of the code. We switch back to the control sheet and then we update cell 22, so it's line two, column two, which is B2. And we um, the value becomes now. So the now always returns the current date and time with you know hours and minutes and seconds. And that's the end of the code. So again, every time you run it, it dumps the data from SAP, deletes the previous data in uh, Excel, uploads the CSV, and updates this timestamp on the control sheet. I hope you have found this exercise useful. If you have questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget that there is a link for this example in the video description. I have a playlist on SAP GUI scripting examples in case you wish to expand your knowledge further. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.